We want to thank you for joining us today on What's Cooking with Teresa. We've got a, a different show today. We're doing Greek foods. The first thing, well, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to show you how to do homemade croutons, and we're going to serve that with a Caesar salad. We're going to do a Greek pork, and we're going to, when we do the presentation on that, we're going to have that with some bread and olives and feta cheese. We're also going to show you how to do red roasted potatoes seasoned and baked in the oven, and baklava, which is a Greek pastry. It's very good. And I really want to thank you for joining us. Come back. We're going to hear a word from our sponsors, and then come back and join us. We want to really thank our sponsors for sponsoring What's Cooking with Teresa. And Traditions Bank of Coleman is our lead sponsor. And if you're looking for a, a friendly community bank, one with a low interest, a friendly staff, they have six locations. They're downtown, Holly Pond, Dodge City, and then out of Coleman is Arley, Hayden, and Priceville. So you need to give Debbie a call if you're looking for some low interest rates now. The number is 256-735-2138. And Doug Doggett Jewelers, they have been in business since 1981, him and his family. They're located on 215 Compass Way. They're, back, they're down beside Ryan's Restaurant. They have stunning jewelry. They do appraisals. They do in-store repairs. And they also do custom jewelry and engraving. So give them a call. Their number is 256-734-7883. And Dr. Sherry Swader, MD, and Diana Wilhite, CRNP. They're CPC Neurology and Professional Building 3 at Coleman Regional Medical Center. They uh, do diagnosis and treatments of the nervous system and disorders, including the brain, the spinal cord, nerves, and the muscles. They do EEGs, nerve conductive studies, and lumbar puncture. The number is 256-736-1615. That's 1615. And we also want to thank the family practice group that's in downtown Coleman. It's Coleman Family Care. They are located about a block south of the old Coleman Hospital in the Folsom Center. They are, they're open Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. And they do take walk-in orders, uh, walk-in patients, I'm sorry, uh, on their uh, regular patients. Um, if you're a regular patient there, you don't have to have an appointment. They can work you in on certain hours of the day. You need to give them a call. Their number is 256 734-3202. So when you see any of these sponsors, tell them thank you for sponsoring our show. Catering by Teresa is rapidly becoming a tradition to the people of Coleman County. For over 12 years, Teresa has catered corporate events, banquets, class reunions, weddings, rehearsal dinners, business luncheons, and holiday parties. Made from scratch meals with little or no MSGs, the variety of choices ranges from prime rib and ribeye steaks to pulled pork barbecue, grilled pork chops, and chicken cordon bleu. Also good old country cooking like meatloaf, country fried steak, and homemade soups and stews. Even specialty menus include vegetarian, diabetic, hors d'oeuvres, and appetizers. Each job is customized to fit the customer. When you want a memorable event, call Catering by Teresa today. Welcome back to the show. Um, while I'm getting this ready, I want to thank our sponsors. We want to thank uh, Traditions Bank for being our lead sponsor of the show. Uh, to begin with today, I'm going to show you, remind you of the little trick that we did before, before we start our croutons. Sp spread your table with a little water if you're using, um, I love my little plastic cutting sheet. It's so easy. But even with a, a, a thick cutting board, Use a thick towel, dampen it, and put your cutting board on it, and it'll keep it from sliding. On this one, I just use a paper towel because it's thin. Need a little more water, and you'll see what happens. Put it down, place it, and it keeps it from sliding. Moves my whole table, actually. Okay, what we're going to start doing, we're going to do homemade croutons. I'm going to get those in the oven and let them be toasting on a low heat, about 250 to 300, while we're preparing everything else. That way, when we do get ready to do our salad, these will be ready. What I like to do, you can use thin or thick bread. I like to lay it out on a, a, a plate 
for about an hour before I cut it. It just gives it a little more firmness, okay? And to save a little time, double stack, hold your bread. Very simple. I used to buy croutons for my salads, and then I got thrifty or cheap or a little ingenuity, whatever you want to call it. I started using my day-old bread. You know, after you buy your bread and it sits on the counter for a couple of days, you want some fresh bread for a sandwich, do not throw that bread away. Make you some croutons. Okay. We're just going to get all this cut up. You can make your crouton as croutons as large or as small as you like. And actually, that looks like it's going to be enough for a pan. What I've got, just got my little small baking pan. I'm going to drizzle the bottom with a little olive oil. Then we're going to put our diced up bread. I did, did these about three quarters of an inch in size. On a Caesar salad, I like the, I like the larger pieces so that we have more of a crunch. Now, drizzle more with olive oil. You can spray this with a nonstick cooking spray. I just prefer the olive oil. I love the flavor it gives. And you can season these any way you want. You can leave them unseasoned or you can just put a little salt. I like the, uh, the, the, the taste of uh, some Italian seasoning. So I'm going to sprinkle with that. A little salt. A little garlic. You can use as much or as little of this as possible. And now what I'm going to do is just give these a toss. You're going to want to drizzle these again because that's what's going to give it that brownness, a light brown. I'm going to do another drizzle. Now, now we're just going to pop these in the oven. And to tell you how long, it could be anywhere from 10 minutes to 30 minutes, depending on uh, the temperature that you set your oven. I've done a quick fix before, popped that baby on about 350 and had them done in 10 minutes. But I'm going to slow uh, roast these in about a 250 degrees. Okay. Now while that is going, let me get my garbage bowl here. Since bread is germ-free, I'm just going to reuse this to do my potatoes on. Okay, again we're going to spritz, put my paper towel down. And what I have here, I think I've mentioned it on a couple of different shows, this is bleach water. I use it religiously in my kitchen. So. Just make sure there's nothing on the surface of your cutting board because it's on the bottom and this just really helps keep your counters clean. So I have already started dicing some of the potatoes. Let me get a little room here. I think I'm overflowing myself. So I've got some started. I'm going to give a little drizzle on the ones that I've started just to keep them moist. And I'm going to stack these out of the way. And we're going to start on the potatoes. I do these dice, just make sure you, you're going to use the peel on. So clean your potatoes really well and I like to clean them the day before so they'll get good and dry. That way when we put the butter and the olive oil on it's going to really keep the uh, seasoning sticking to it. So just they do not have to be ex precisely the same size. If you can keep them moderately the same size that'll be great. That way they'll all cook the same. You won't have some a little hard. Now, if there's a little spot in your potato, just cut it out because we're dealing with nature's food here. Goodness knows, none of us are perfect. If some are a little small, doesn't matter. Just give you a little crisp when you eat it. Toss these in our bowl. Okay, just cut right down the middle. If they're larger potatoes, just cut them in a three-way and dice. I 
I love to leave the, leave the peels on on my potatoes. Gives you more vitamins. I can remember growing up, my mother would never let me peel a potato because I could start with a potato this big and it would be this big. And back then you didn't waste anything. It tells how old I am. <laughs> but uh, I, I've, and I always, I, I've never really eat the peelings on anything until about two or three years ago. I uh, just started experimenting. And the more I can leave my potato peels on, the more I do. It just, I guess I'm getting older and more health conscious. I want to get as many vitamins in as I can. Okay, we're almost done here. So, I'm going to get these little babies seasoned up. I'm going to get them in the pan. Okay, that's it. Now, I'm going to set this aside, and on this, you just toss everything in there. We're going to start with a teaspoon of garlic, a teaspoon of paprika. This seasoning mix really has a lot going for it. Pepper, two teaspoons of parsley. So, so far we've done paprika, garlic, pepper, parsley onion powder, one teaspoon, two teaspoons of salt. You've got to have enough salt in this to bring out the flavor. Teaspoon of cumin, and then we're going to, this is the spoon I just did the bread with, garlic, oregano, butter, doesn't matter. Put a half a cup of butter in. I'm going to give these a toss. And I've got my baking pan underneath. You don't have to spray it or anything because you've got enough butter. I'm going to put about two tablespoons of olive oil. I've got uh, my oven preheating. What we're going to do is bake these in the oven on 375 for about 30 minutes. Check them for tenderness. If they're tender, you don't want to overcook them because they'll shrivel. But see all the pretty color we have in those seasonings? So we've got these ready to go in the oven. We're going to put them in the oven at 350, and then we're going to bake them. Uh, we're going to test them in about 30 minutes to test the doneness and serve them with our Greek pork later on. So right now we're going to hear a word from our sponsor. So y'all come back and join us, and we're going to start on some Greek pork. Missions Bank has been our lead sponsor of our show of What's Cooking with Teresa. We want to thank them. So when you go into the bank, you tell them thank you for sponsoring our show. They're located in downtown Coleman. They have a, an, uh, an office at Holly Pond, Dodge City. They also have three in the surrounding counties, one at Arley, one at Hayden, and one at Priceville. So if you're looking for low interest rates, you give Debbie a call. Tell her Teresa sent you from What's Cooking. Her number is 256 735 2138. And we want to thank Chastity Jordan. Chastity is a master ha uh, cosmetologist. She's been doing hair for over 16 years and she specializes in different cuts to shape your face. She can also customize a hair color and she can all do any of the family hair needs. Give Chastity a call and set up an appointment if you want just that right look for Easter, for Mother's Day, for any holiday coming up. Her number is 256 734 2042. And Dr. Sherry Swader. We want to thank her for being uh, a sponsor of our show. Her and her staff. Um, I actually cater a lot for their office, so I'm kind of close to them, and I want to thank them. Uh, they're CPC Neurologist here in Coleman, and they're located in Professional Building 3 at CRMC. They do EEGs, nerve con uh, conductive studies, and lumbar puncture. They're open Monday through Thursday from 8 to 4, Friday from 8 to 10. So if you have a need or a question, give them a call, 256-736-1615. Thanks, Stuart Moore, attorney. He's located at 409 2nd Avenue Southwest. It's about a half a block north of the courthouse. Uh, Stuart, he generalizes, his, he has a general practice of law. He does debt consolidation, bankruptcy, divorce, child custody, personal injury, wills and deeds. And really, if you have a question as to what Stuart can do for you, give them a call. They, they're home folks. They love to deal with local people. Their number is 256-739-0148. And if you do call them, tell them you've seen the show and their advertisement.
catering by Teresa is rapidly becoming a tradition to the people of Cullman County. For over 12 years, Teresa has catered corporate events, banquets, class reunions, weddings, rehearsal dinners, business luncheons, and holiday parties. Made from scratch meals with little or no MSGs, the variety of choices ranges from prime rib and ribeye steaks to pulled pork barbecue, grilled pork chops, and chicken cordon bleu. Also good old country cooking like meatloaf, country fried steak, and homemade soups and stews. Even specialty menus include vegetarian, diabetic, hors d'oeuvres, and appetizers. Each job is customized to fit the customer. When you want a memorable event, call Catering by Teresa today. Welcome back. We're going to start with, uh, I've got about a seven pound Boston butt and with this we're going to dice it up into about half an inch to a one inch size bite size pieces. So the original recipe for this, it's so interesting. It came from an actual Greek family and it is just so simple. They said to use all of the, uh, the fat, the marble and everything. I don't like to do that. So what I do is I discard a lot of this, and this is very, this is the worst part about doing the Greek pork. I tell you what, that is not a very sharp knife. Let me jump to this one. Oh yeah. Um, what I do on this, on the Greek pork, you can, this is a wonderful weekend meal because what you can do, it has to marinate for three days. How great is that? So when you get home from work or home from ball practice with the kids or finish cleaning the house or working in the garden, whatever, go in, throw this together. What you do is you put it in a gallon jug and it sits in the fridge for about three days and then you pull it out and uh, cook it. Okay. And really, it might have been a crazy thing for me to do this on a cooking show, but it does is because it's not glamorous. And it's hard to do. This is the hardest part, actually. And actually, my husband usually does this for me. So, uh, because I'm usually prepping something else. So, and that is just a very tough piece of fat. Once you get that cut, it doesn't really matter how you dice this meat. I just whack off a piece. See, you've got a thick layer, layer of the marbled fat right there. I usually don't put that in. Even though I'm a large person, I just don't like all that pork fat. So I just try to cut it out. And you don't have to be picky with this. That's a good thing. Just, and then just strip it up into strips. Like I said, it's, it's not a glamorous thing, but honey, when you put it on the table, it's wonderful. It's worth every bit of the time that you put in. And this will probably only take you about 15 to 20 minutes to do it. And in actuality, when you think about it, once this, this is the hardest step, this is the most time consuming step, once this step is done, it's sitting there waiting to be cooked. All you've got to do is heat a skillet and put it in. And then it takes about 12 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes on that, if that long. And that's it. So you see how we're doing this? And you can actually cut off more of that fat. And in real time, I probably would. But right now, I'm just going to try to get this in there to show you how we do it. This recipe, like I said, it came from a Greek family, a friend of ours that lives in Gulf Shores. They have a tradition this is what they have every Christmas morning for breakfast, believe it or not. That way mom doesn't have to get up and cook breakfast. She already has this marinated. She gets up, puts it in a skillet, and they eat on it till, I guess, till she has lunch done. But, uh, but it's good. And I like it if I'm going to be out of town or if I know I'm going to be working odd hours and I know my family... We're not big junk food eaters. We like the real food. And so this is something, when our boys was growing up, I could always have it in the fridge. And 
they could come in and cook them themselves. And then with this and the bread with the potatoes, because they knew how to do the potatoes, then they had a meal ready. And Mom didn't have to do it. She already did the hard part. And I know I'm just whipping through this, but there's no rhyme or reason to it because it doesn't have to be perfect. You just, same way with the potatoes, you pretty much just want to get everything the same. Now, see, there's a big glob right there. I am going to cut around it. Sometimes you'll just get that gristly fat in there, a ligament or whatever. Just cut it out. Okay. Now, this is a, on a Boston butt, you're going to have the T-bone. Okay? And so what I do on it, try not to hit your knife on the bone because it will dull it. Okay? So I just go down. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing well. But just cut the bone, cut around the bone. Okay? And since this does have to marinate for um, three days, I have a finished product. It's over there. I will show that to you. I did it three days ago. And we've got it ready to fry up after a while. So just cut that meat. See, there's a really pretty lean piece of meat. That's the kind that I like. But you want to cut it around the bone. And it's a good thing you really don't have to be particular with this. I could never do it. There's a good piece around the bone we're going to get. All right. I get so engrossed in cutting, I forget to tell you maybe some of the instructions or whatever. But uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to cut this up. I'm going to set this aside because I really need to get to show, get into uh, showing you the rest of the ingredients that goes into this because that's probably another 15 minutes of work right there getting around that bone and I'm not going to waste that time since I have a finished product. Oh, croutons are ready. How about that? I'll get those out shortly because they really need to be cooled down before we do it with our salad. Okay. What I'm going to do now, this is only about probably a third of the pork because I'll get a lot more out of that. And I'm going to take my gloves off. Anytime you're dealing with raw meat, you always want to be careful. Okay, so I've got that. I'm going to handle my cutting board on the bottom. Put it here out of the way. I want to give my table a good little spritz, just in case any of the raw meat juices had got on anything. Okay. Now. When you're dealing with raw meat, you can never be too careful. Okay, we have our pork. What I'm going to do here, on the recipe, it calls for salt and pepper to taste. So, and you can just go about it ever how much. I'm only going to put, I'm going to go ahead and put the right amount in for that whole Boston butt because during a break, I may cut that up and get it ready to go. So what you're going to do is put about two tablespoons of salt in this. You're going to put about a tablespoon of dried oregano. Now, if you want to use the fresh, that'll be fine. Uh, you may have to use a little more um, than the tablespoon because uh, as, as, the, as your herbs dehydrate, they get stronger because they're more concentrated. And then we're going to do about a half a tablespoon, which would be about one and a half teaspoon of pepper. Okay. We're going to put three what, did it, what this is, this is lemon juice. I have a juicer in my kitchen, and I went ahead and juiced my lemons because I knew the meat would take a while. And I'm going to put three tablespoons of juiced lemon in there, okay? Now, on this, I really like to use the fresh garlic. So, what you want to do is use a whole bulb of the garlic, which is going to be anywhere from five to seven cloves. Okay. Now I used my shelf's knife on my meat, so I'm not going to be able to do that. But what you would do, just pretend like this is my shelf's knife, you're going to 
pop your garlic bulb down like that and you're going to cut it up into small minced pieces. I'm not going to do the whole thing on this one simply because time is an issue. Like I said, when you're preparing this, it's a time thing. Once the hard part's done, you're over. Now quickly, we're going to pretend all the garlic is in there. We're going to pretend all that meat is in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to, you're going to take about, well, ever how much um, olive oil it's going to take. It could take anywhere from two cups to four cups. You're going to pour, start out pouring two cups of olive oil in this. Give it a quick stir. I'm not going to do that because I want to add the rest of my ingredients later. You want to give it a good stir. You want to pack it into a gallon jug. It could be plastic or glass. When you get all the meat in there, it should come to about, uh, I don't know, about an inch, inch or two from the top. Then take a wooden spoon and you want to pack it down, okay? Then take more olive oil because you really want to cover this meat. I want you to see how the finished product's going to look, okay? Right there is what your Greek pork's going to look like while it marinates. And uh, I've really packed this down, and my meat has risen up a little bit. I actually tested it this morning, so that's why it's not covered. So, okay, we have this set aside. I'm going to clean my mess up, and we'll get us started on making baklava. Okay. I know this is kind of a different show, a lot of different, different details and stuff, but it's really worth it. When people heard that I was going to do baklava, they thought, oh, that is, that's, that's just a difficult thing. It's really not. It's, uh, there again, it's another time-consuming thing, but it is so worth it. Okay. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to come back and do the baklava because I've got to get my pans all out and ready. I've got to get my oven preheated. I'm going to check on the croutons. And so when we come back, we're going to start on the baklava. And, um, and it's going to be a little time thing, but it's going to be really worth it. So we're going to hear a word from our sponsors. And then we're going to come back and jump on this baklava. So you come right back with us. We want to really thank our sponsors for sponsoring What's Cooking with Teresa. And Traditions Bank of Coleman is our lead sponsor. And if you're looking for a, a friendly community bank, one with a low interest, a friendly staff, they have six locations. They're downtown, Holly Pond, Dodge City, and then out of Coleman is Arley, Hayden, and Priceville. So you need to give Debbie a call if you're looking for some low interest rates now. The number is 256-735-2138. And Doug Doggett Jewelers, they have been in business since 1981, him and his family. They're located on 215 Compass Way. They're, back, they're down beside Ryan's Restaurant. They have stunning jewelry. They do appraisals, they do in-store repairs, and they also do custom jewelry and engraving. So give them a call. Their number is 256-734-7883. And Dr. Sherry Swader, M.D., and Diana Wilhite, CRNP. They're CPC Neurology and Professional Building 3 at Coleman Regional Medical Center. They uh, do diagnosis and treatments of the nervous system and disorders, including the brain, the spinal cord, nerves, and the muscles. They do EEGs, nerve conductive studies, and lumbar puncture. The number is 256-736-1615. That's 1615. And we also want to thank the family practice group that's in downtown Coleman. It's Coleman Family Care. They are located about a block south of the old Coleman Hospital in the Folsom Center. They are, they're open Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. And they do take walk-in orders, uh, walk-in patients, I'm sorry, uh, on their uh, regular patients. Um, if you're a regular patient there, you don't have to have an appointment. They can work you in on certain hours of the day. You need to give them a call. Their number is 256 734-3202. So when you see any of these sponsors, tell them thank you for sponsoring our show. 
catering by Teresa is rapidly becoming a tradition to the people of Cullman County. For over 12 years, Teresa has catered corporate events, banquets, class reunions, weddings, rehearsal dinners, business luncheons, and holiday parties. Made from scratch meals with little or no MSGs, the variety of choices ranges from prime rib and ribeye steaks to pulled pork barbecue, grilled pork chops, and chicken cordon bleu. Also good old country cooking like meatloaf, country fried steak, and homemade soups and stews. Even specialty menus include vegetarian, diabetic, hors d'oeuvres, and appetizers. Each job is customized to fit the customer. When you want a memorable event, call Catering by Teresa today. Y'all ready to make some baklava? Okay, we're going to get started. First, what you need to buy, well, baklava, first of all, is a Greek pastry, and it's the, the ingredients are minimal. You have your phyllo dough, pecans, cinnamon, butter, and vanilla, and that's basically it. Then you do a little topping of sugar, honey, and water. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with our phyllo dough. It comes in a pack of two, and you are going to use both of these. And if you've never worked with phyllo dough, it could get a little irritating sometimes. I think that's why everybody says making baklava is difficult. But the trick is, if you'll keep your phyllo dough moist, you shouldn't have a problem with it. So what we're going to do is, you, I want you to be able to see this. You just take it and you just unroll it. Very, very thin, almost paper thin, actually. Keep it on the plastic. I have dampened a cloth. Get a thin, clean cloth, dampen it, squeeze it out, and just lay it on top. So now I'm going to leave that there for a second. And what I'm going to do now, I've got a cup of honey in my pot. To this, we're going to add a cup of, half a cup of honey. I, please, I'm sorry. We're going to add a cup of water. We're going to add a cup of sugar. And... I'm getting this started just to get it out of the way, just to show you one of the steps. Okay, what you want to do with this, we're going to put it on the stove and let it simmer for the last 20 minutes of the cooking time of the baklava. It takes about 50 minutes to cook the baklava. Fortunately, I made a batch last night so we can't have a finished product because this is another time thing. It's not difficult, it's just time consuming. So we, we've got our uh, glaze started here. Now before you pour this over your baklava, when you take it out of the oven, simmer this for 20 minutes, take it out of the oven, the baklava, put a teaspoon of vanilla in it, and then stir and pour over it. So I'm gonna set this aside, but uh, that is one of the steps that in between the cooking time that you do. I did it at the beginning just to show you. So. Get this out of my way so I can have some cooking space. Okay. I take my cloth. I set it over to the side. Take a 9 by 13 pan. You want to brush it with butter. The recipe calls for a cup of butter. I usually have a cup and a half on hand simply because if it happens to take more, I've got it there because I don't want to have to stop right in the middle of layering my baklava and have to melt some more butter. So we've got our bottom and sides butter. Leave my butter brush there. Okay. Now, this is super, super, super thin. It's so paper thin, I don't even know if you can tell if you've never used it before. But your first layers, you take two at a time. On this recipe, remember two, two at a time. And it's going to be maybe a little larger than your pan, but you can just poke it down on the sides, and that's no problem. So you have two layers of phyllo. I'm going to brush it with some butter. Do not do the back and forth stroke. It, the phyllo will tear. And if it tears, no big deal, because you're going to keep layering, and it's going to be covered. Okay? So we're going to layer. Like I said, this is a little time issue thing. Well worth it, though. Okay, two layers. What you're going to do is once you get a total of eight layers of your phyllo dough down, then that's when you're going to start incorporating the, the nuts. So I'll tell you what, let's 
phyllo dough is just a little bit long. So just get a knife. We're just going to cut down. Because if you don't, you're going to have a lot of humped up on the sides where it's taking up that space. And uh, you don't want that. So now. Okay, so we have uh, two sets of two layers, which is four layers down. Halfway there before we start the nuts. Okay. And in this recipe, you will use both rolls of the phyllo dough. So, And as you go, just press it down, okay? And I'm going to go kind of quickly because we've got a lot to get to in this segment. So, two more. Then we're going to be ready for the nuts. If you happen to get three, don't worry. This is kind of like a, a recipe where you can rob Peter and pay Paul. I'm not... I'm not a perfectionist with my cooking. I want the outcome to be perfect as much as possible. But while you're getting there, I always heard a good cook can cover up the mistakes as long as it's done well and clean and tastefully. Okay, two more. And then when I, sometimes when I get into the layer, I'll forget. If I have 10 down, it's no big deal. I don't sweat the small stuff because you can make up for it as you go. Believe it or not, you're thinking, how are all most of those nuts, and maybe not all of those nuts, but most of those nuts plus the phyllo dough going to fit in there. It will. Okay. What I have here, you can use pecans. You can use walnuts. Uh, those are the two main nuts that I would use if I were going to be doing this. And I put them in my food processor. I wanted a coarse, coarse ground or a fine chop, either which way you want to look at it. And to that, we're going to add about a teaspoon of cinnamon. I could eyeball it, but if I accidentally drop too much in there, I can't get it out. So, okay. That's all the cinnamon that this recipe calls for. Just give it a toss. You wouldn't really think that that little amount of cinnamon would make a big deal, but it really does. Just like the teaspoon of vanilla in the glaze, it, it does. It pops it out. Okay. Now we're going to set this aside. This is my trusted uh, tablespoon, measuring spoon. I always use it doing my baklava. The handle, I don't know why. I'm just quirky, I guess. But you're going to take three tablespoons, and I do heaping tablespoons because I don't take the time to level off on something like this because it's not going to matter. You just want to drizzle over all the baklava, make sure it's covered. If you happen to miss a spot here or there, you're going to get it on the next few layers. Okay, so now we've got our nuts going, we've got our baklava going, and what you're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tell you this while I'm doing it. Um, the, you take, there again, two sheets of the phyllo dough. And if it tears, which it might start tearing because as it dries out, it will. Take your two, put them down. Now, this is something I like to wear my gloves when I'm cooking. But I have really tried to do the baklava with my gloves. You just can't grasp it. Best thing to do is just use that bleach water on the hands. I guarantee you that's probably cleaner than any gloves you could put on. Okay, I've got those two turned back and ready. So, three tablespoons of nuts. You keep going two phyllo dough, three tablespoons of nuts. Two phyllo dough, three tablespoons of nuts. You, you, uh, it's monotonous, but that's the routine that you stay in until you get to the end. And that you're going to do the end, the topping, just like you did the bottom. You're going to count out about eight sheets. And at that point, you're going to stop with the nuts. Then you're going to go two sheets butter, two sheets butter until you get to the end. So, and I'm going to go rather quickly because cutting this, it's tricky. And I, I'd really like for you to see how to, it's cut. If not, I can describe it because it is a time show. And I really want you to see the finished product, so that's why I went ahead and prepared one. Okay, now you're seeing what you're going to get into. Sometimes it's going to be miscuts in it, and sometimes it's going to tear, but that's okay. Don't sweat it. Okay? Just, just be as gentle as you can with it. That's all you can do. And as you get to this point, start pressing down. 
because it needs to be as compact as possible. And you just keep going. This is something that we like to fix at Christmas time. And I'm sure as you've shopped during the holidays, you've seen the baklava on the shelves uh, at different stores and uh, at different locations. Bakeries may have them. You might can special order some. But um, I just, I usually make two and three batches through the holidays. Wonderful with a cup of coffee to relax. And since springtime is here, I think that's holiday enough to have baklava. What about y'all? We can make up a holiday for baklava, actually. And really, I don't know of a low-fat way to do this because you have to have your butter or margarine, either one. If you don't, you just can't do the recipe. So we'll just eat it in moderation. We'll have four pieces instead of five. Not really. Okay. Finished with this, the first pack. Okay. Like I said, it's not difficult. It's just, it's routine. It's monotonous. And the first time I did it, I will admit, the baklava almost overwhelmed me. I mean, the, the filo dough almost overwhelmed me doing the baklava because I wasn't used to it. It took doing the second batch of baklava to, to I guess you have to get in the right mind. You have to understand the filo dough because it can whoop you, believe it or not. Okay, it looks like that pack is stuck to it. And I really don't want to bore you with all this monotonous stuff here, but I assure you, when you get to the end, you're going to go, ah! Now I'm going to go ahead and cut this because I just have a feeling it's going to be the same way as before. And to show you, look at that, how just thin the phyllo dough is. Okay, ready to go again. Now, if I wasn't in such a hurry, I would put this over it occasionally, but I'm not because we're scooting right along. I think everybody in the station here is just waiting till the end so we can eat. Okay, two sheets. A little funny story on the baklava. Quite a few years ago, I had only made it once or twice. I, I, I just like to get in the kitchen and experiment for different jobs when we're catering. But uh, my mother-in-law is a retired nurse and one of the doctors every year would make homemade candies and bring it to the ER nurses. Well, she brought some baklava home one day, and this was when my son, he probably wasn't but about seven or eight, and really, I didn't know what baklava was until a few years ago myself, but, uh, but she came in and she said, oh, I've got something I want you to try. And so he went over there and he took a bite and he said, oh, that baklava is delicious. And I think her mouth dropped open. She had to roll her tongue back up because, you know, for a child, especially a, a little country boy like, like he is, uh, it floored her because she said, she said, I'd never heard of it. But I guess being raised up around food, my children has... They've had to experiment, and they've had to taste things. Maybe I tortured them with it some, but that's okay. But it did broaden their horizons on different foods, because they can cook. They, they can cook, and I'm so glad. Okay, we're getting down to the nitty-gritty. I did too many pecans, and I tend to do that when I do the nuts. Uh, on the one pound of pecans, I did forget to tell you this. The recipe calls for one pound of nuts. But So what I did, I have a kitchen scale in my kitchen, but not everybody does. So I measured out to get the right measurement for you, and a pound of nuts is going to run about six cups. And when I, do put, when I put the recipe on the website and everything, um, I would really like for you all to friend me on Facebook, and you might be able to pull. We're still technically working on a lot of this stuff, getting the recipes out there and everything. We've got a lot more viewers. I had a lady the other night at a wedding that I was doing that come up and said, I seen you on the show. And I was just so floored that actually a stranger had watched it and mentioned it to me rather than family members because I have to bribe everybody, I think, in the family to watch it. 
but um, <sighs> okay, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. I've not pressed it down over the last few layers. And when you do that, you can see if you have any empty spots with the nuts and just fill them in on the next few layers. Okay. But um, I was telling you about the nuts. I always do extra when I'm grinding the nuts or chopping because they're, again, right in the middle of layering all this. You don't want to run out of nuts because I did that in the very first time I made it because I get a little nut happy or any ingredient. I, I have a tendency to overdo. And while I was doing it, I, I ran out of nuts right in the middle. So I had to stop my layering, go finish the nuts, and then continue. And I think that's one of the reasons that it took me a while because I would, I, I would run out of the butter. And I had to melt some more butter when I'd run out of the nuts because I probably used a little bit more than the recipe called for. What I'm going to do at this stage, I'm going to count my sheets. Two. Okay, I've got eight sheets left. This is going to be my last layer of nuts and then we're going to do the ending and then I'm going to show you how to cut it and after that we are going to let me crank this little skillet up we're going to start cooking some Greek pork and then we're going to get busy making a uh, Caesar salad okay if you happen to run short um, of a sheet of the phyllo dough like last night when I was making one that we could present on the show my last layer I had one sheet it's no big deal. You just do it, you know, you do it like you would if you had two. So, that's the thing about cooking. If everybody would get in the frame of mind that it's okay if it's not perfect, it's okay if it's not exactly by the recipe, because I usually get a recipe, try it the first time. Well, sometimes I don't even go exactly the first time. If I see that I want to add a, a special ingredient that I like, I go ahead and do it. But uh, I experiment after I do it the first time and put your own touches to it. If a recipe calls for rosemary and you just detest rosemary, d don't, don't not do the recipe. Do it. Just leave it out. Okay. We were talking earlier here at the station about how as we get older, our taste buds change. That's like I used to love stuffed mushrooms, my son does. But it's got to where the last couple of times I've just, I've just not had the desire to eat them. So your taste buds will change. And saying that, to say this, please don't get stuck in a rut and not try different things. Because as you age, your taste buds will change. One of my sons, every year he tries fried okra. Because he said it looks so good. He just wants to like it, but he doesn't but at least he tries it. Okay, guys, we made it to the end, which is a very, very, very good feat to do. Okay. All right, you wanna layer the end, very last layer, all the way to the edge. And I really hope I didn't rush through this too much for you because I really did want to get to this part because to be honest with you, this is the part that really drives me crazy and I wanted to show you that even I can mess it up as well as you can when you start cutting it because I always do but I still you know you just don't give up all right once you have it uh, all layered you need to pre-cut the baklava before you bake it because that way each cut will have a little crispness to it so just take your knife and don't use a serrated knife on this and all right here's the trick Here's what I used to mess up on. You have to hold this because if you don't, these, these layers are going to slide. So I put my fingers, brace it down, and I hold it as I cut. Now, if I go to lift my fingers up, it's going to pull it up. So take your knife, push it back down like that. First time I made this, oh my goodness, I was just almost in tears because I messed the whole top layers up. Okay, now see, I've got to move my fingers. So just take your knife. Lay it back down, and I'm going to finish this right here. Hold your knife down. That's why, see, I really wanted to get to the end, because if, if you were to make this at home and it started doing this, you would probably get disgusted and say, I'll never do it again. But I want to let you know that it's going to do it no matter who does it. Once you get your three cuts, which is going to give you four rows, then you start in the corner, and with this first piece, you're going to cut diagonally. 
We're going to go diagonally down there again. It's going to take time. Start with the next one and just give it diagonal cuts. Okay? Now, you're going to keep going. Once this is done, you're going to put it in a preheated 350 degree oven. It's going to cook for 50 minutes. And there again, remember what we did before? We started the, uh, the, the honey, the sugar, the water syrup. I have it all in the pan and ready to go. But what I do is I keep time on it 20 minutes before it's ready to come out of the oven. Bring it to a simmer. Let the liquid simmer for 20 minutes. When this comes out of the oven, you drizzle it over it and you're ready to go. So now, saying that to say this. I'm going to clean my mess up. We're going to start cooking some Greek pork and making Caesar salad. Okay. This is the vanilla that I'm going to put in uh, last on the, uh, the glaze. Okay. I'm just going to, before I start on the Caesar salad, I'm just going to put some of this Greek pork in so it will be done. So um, just get your skillet. You can use an electric skillet. You can use a cast iron skillet, Teflon. It doesn't matter. What you want to do, I don't even know if you can see this on the camera, but it's just something i got to get done. Okay. Remember all the olive oil that we uh, said we were going to put in this Greek pork to let it marinate? That's going to be your... You don't have to put anything in your skillet because you're going to be cooking in this olive oil that's coming out here. Okay. Turn my skillet up a little bit. Get some high heat going. You hear the sizzle? All these seasonings, I wish, like I said on another show, I wish we had some television because this smells awesome. Okay. Got our pork going in there. And on this recipe, the reason I love it, if you want to take enough for one serving out, you can. If you want to cook for a crowd, you know you've got something going on on the weekend, get it ready. Okay, so we got it going. I'm gonna, I don't want this to really steam that much. I don't want to hold the steam in, so I'm gonna put my lid uh, cock, uh, cock eyed over it. Okay, now since that's going, I'm gonna get my stuff, come back over to the table, and we're gonna start with some uh, the Caesar salad dressing. Okay, all right, we're going to. Get all of our stuff over. Now this recipe, there again, it came from uh, the same Greek family that gave us the Greek port recipe. I know you can buy the bottle salad dressings. I, I prefer making my own. And that's what I do in the catering. I make almost all of my salad dressings. Okay, what I've got here, I've got one egg. And as I've heard, I heard this lady on another cooking show years ago say who has actually died from eating a raw egg okay if you don't feel comfortable using the raw egg um, actually we have some little red hens in a pen at our on our farm so I know what our chickens are eating I know how clean they are and so I know what are in my eggs uh, you can also use egg beaters in this if you don't want to use uh, a raw egg that is no problem you can just buy a pasteurized egg uh, out of the grocery store, just use the equivalent of one egg. Okay, you want to really get it beat up. Okay, so there's my one egg to this. And there again, like we did the potatoes, I'm just going to start adding. You just add it in and stir. You're going to put about a tablespoon of mustard. Okay. And about, of course, the recipe calls for anchovies. And, um, uh, in Gulf Shores, where I got the recipe, you can find the, uh, the anchovy cream down there, but you couldn't find it in Coleman. Until the day before yesterday, I'd never seen it anywhere in Coleman. So I do have the anchovy cream. What you do is you can use one to two tablespoons of the anchovy cream, or you can use five little strips of the anchovies. And what I do is when I buy the anchovies and peel it back, use about half of the little tin, okay? And, but if you use anchovies, I have to use a blender because I don't like to bite into it. I like the flavor, so I use a blender. But since I've got the paste, we're just going to do it the easy way. I'm thinking I'm just going to start with one tablespoon of this, because I believe this is really, really concentrated. Yeah. So what we're going to do, I'm going to leave it right here, leave it out, just in case I do need to add some to it. I 
hate to work with a mess, but anyway. Okay, we're going to sprinkle about a teaspoon of salt, about a teaspoon of pepper. And the recipe calls for just a few dashes of red wine vinegar. I splashed four dashes in this. I'm going to use about half of it, okay, which would be about two splashes. Give it a good stir. Okay. Now I've got five, um, I've got, let's see, I think five cloves of garlic in here. And so that is a lot of garlic, but you've got to have the flavors. If you're going to do it, do it good. Do a good job when you're doing it. Worcestershire sauce, about five splashes in my cup. I'm going to put about three splashes in there. And then it calls for the juice of one lemon. There again, this is the lemon that I've already pre-juiced. So I'm going to put about one and a half tablespoon. Now I've got my Parmesan cheese. I brought it over here for the recipe, but I think instead of uh, layering my salad, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, do that before the presentation. Because you want to put your croutons, which we have gotten finished, and your Parmesan cheese on your Caesar salad. We've got that stirred real good. Let me check our Greek pork. I hear it sizzling. I don't know if you can hear it or not. But we've got her going. Okay. When you're doing your Greek pork, don't, don't let all the olive oil in here scare you. Because actually, there's a certain way that you're going to eat this Greek pork with the, uh, the bread and the feta cheese and the olives. And when you're eating it, you're going to use some of that cooked olive oil in with your bread. Okay. I'm just going to leave the lid off of that and let that start to brown. Okay. Now, we've got our base for our Caesar salad dressing started here. What we're going to do, I'm going to add about a half a cup of olive oil. Okay. There we go. And if you want to mince your garlic up a little bit finer, that is, that's fine. Um, if you want to use garlic powder, that's also fine. If you want to use uh, minced garlic from just in the jar. I'm not a stickler on going exactly by a recipe because there's going to be times when you're going to make something and you're not going to have exactly what you need for it. Hey, substitute. If it's close enough, substitute. I'm going to give this a little taste. See what we've got going here. I think it's about right. Actually, I think I might have put just a tad too much salt in it. So what I'm going to do to correct that is, if you have a, something a little bit salty, put you just a pinch of sugar in it. Believe it or not, that will cut it. And it's a little bit strong. Because on the recipe, the recipe actually calls for one half cup to a full cup of olive oil. So I'm going to do more olive oil. And that will cut down on the salt. Okay, there we go. All right. We've got our salad dressing ready to go. When we come back, we're going to put the salad together. We're going to have it ready uh, on presentation. We're going to have the salad dressing. We're going to have our Greek pork and show you how to assemble it on a tray. So please come back and join us, and uh, we're going to eat some Greek. Thank you. Missions Bank has been our lead sponsor of our show of What's Cooking with Teresa. We want to thank them. So when you go into the bank, you tell them thank you for sponsoring our show. They're located in downtown Coleman. They have a, an, uh, an office at Holly Pond, Dodge City. They also have three in the surrounding counties, one at Arley, one at Hayden, and one at Priceville. So if you're looking for low interest rates, you give Debbie a call. Tell her Teresa sent you from What's Cooking. Her number is 256 735 2138. And we want to thank Chastity Jordan. Chastity is a master ha uh, cosmetologist. She's been doing hair for over 16 years, and she specializes in different cuts to shape your face, 
She can also customize a hair color, and she can all do any of the family hair needs. Give Chastity a call and set up an appointment if you want just that right look for Easter, for Mother's Day, for any holiday coming up. Her number is 256-734-2042. And Dr. Sherry Swader. We want to thank her for being uh, a sponsor of our show. Her and her staff. Um, I actually cater a lot for their office, so I'm kind of close to them, and I want to thank them. Uh, they're CPC Neurologist here in Coleman. And they're located in Professional Building 3 at CRMC. They do EEGs, nerve con uh, conductive studies, and lumbar puncture. They're open Monday through Thursday from 8 to 4. Friday from 8 to 10. So if you have a need or a question, give them a call, 256-736-1615. Thanks, Stuart Moore, attorney. He's located at 409 2nd Avenue Southwest. It's about a half a block north of the courthouse. Uh, Stuart, he generalizes, his, he has a general practice of law. He does debt consolidation, bankruptcy, divorce, child custody, personal injury, wills and deeds. And really, if you have a question as to what Stuart can do for you, give them a call. They, they're home folks. They love to deal with local people. Their number is 256-739-0148. And if you do call them, tell them you've seen the show and their advertisement. Catering by Teresa is rapidly becoming a tradition to the people of Coleman County. For over 12 years, Teresa has catered corporate events, banquets, class reunions, weddings, rehearsal dinners, business luncheons, and holiday parties. Made from scratch meals with little or no MSGs, the variety of choices ranges from prime rib and ribeye steaks to pulled pork barbecue, grilled pork chops, and chicken cordon bleu. Also good old country cooking like meatloaf, country fried steak, and homemade soups and stews. Even specialty menus include vegetarian, diabetic, hors d'oeuvres, and appetizers. Each job is customized to fit the customer. When you want a memorable event, call Catering by Teresa today. All right, we have everything planned, everything presented, and now we're going to tell you what we've done. We started off making our croutons, our homemade croutons, and this was just made out of any bread that you've got. Showed you how to cut it and bake them. Once they're toasted up, we did our salad, our Caesar salad. I've already drizzled it with our homemade dressing that we did, topped it with some Parmesan cheese, and put a few croutons on it. Now, at our house, we'd like to have more cheese on the side and more croutons and salad dressing on the side. So, of course, you know, that can come later. Uh, here we have our roasted red potatoes that we seasoned. We've got those plated up and ready to go. This is our Greek pork that we had uh, in the skillet cooking in the olive oil. Notice we had plenty of olive oil left. That's for dipping your bread. And the way that I was told to eat the Greek meal is you have your feta cheese, green olives, black olives, and just a loaf of bread that we've just pulled apart. Now you can use any olives you want to. You cannot use any olives if you don't want to because we're a divided family on that. Uh, and then to tie everything up, we have our baklava. This was the one that I had already pre-made. It's pre-cut. And if you'll notice, when you pre-cut it before you bake it, it just tends to crisp everything up. So that's what we've got going. And I, I thought I heard someone. Hey. Who we have here? It's food. It's food. It's <laughs> Guys, so good. Deb from You're Deb's way, Bookstore. Darling. No, don't tell me that. Are you fixing I, to dive in? Yes. Okay. Do you know how to work these? Wow, these are high tech. I just bought them because they were pink. <laughs> All right, now you've oh got to have goodness. some potatoes. It smells so good. Did you smell it from down the street? I did. I did. Well, lock the doors then because everybody's going to be coming in. That's right. I'm going to use my get hands if you don't give me a spoon. Now, when you dip some of that, get some of the olive oil in it. It's going right. to run everywhere. Okay. That's okay. That's what the bread's for. Well, give me some bread. There you go, girl. And you're supposed to dip this in the... Yeah, dip it in the... Oh, just like at a real restaurant. Yeah. So what you think? That's really good. Is that really good? Yeah, okay, are you an olive or no olive? I'm a no olive. Okay, feta cheese? Yeah, where do you All put right. it? Just on everything? No, here's what you do. I'm going to tell you what to do. You've got to get a little more juice oh, in your plate. Oh, yeah. Where do you the, put it? Pour it right there. It's going to go everywhere, but that's okay. Now, take a pinch of your bread. I'm going to hold your plate. Pinch the bread. Pinch of the bread. Okay. Get a piece of the meat with some of the olive oil. 
pinch some of the cheese with it. You're going to have a mouthful. Put this all in my mouth. All in, time, in your mouth on at the camera. same time. Oh, really good. Does it come together? Yeah, it does. All right, now see. Does. Now at this time, you'd pop an olive if you were olive. Would you like a fork, ma'am? <laughs> I'm doing fine. <laughs> The salad will get messy. What's the fork for? <laughs> the salad. That's really good. Is that good? Yeah. Well, you know, you can find the recipe. You can. Yeah. We're going at, to get it at up. Teresa's school. At Teresa's school. One day, one day. <laughs> Teresa's school of cooking. Mm. But right now, it's what's cooking with Teresa. Mm hmm. Yeah. Did it pass the test, Deb? Yeah, I'll see you later. <laughs> I tend to have my, my salad dressing a little salty, mm -mm. so oh, I put okay. more olive oil in it. Did it pull mm -hmm. it out? Okay. It's very good. I like it a lot. Now, you didn't see how I did the potatoes. Mm -mm. They have about six different seasonings on those. They're, They're just very a little good. Bit. Well, see, my husband's allergic to MSGs, so I had to come up with a lot of seasonings that had no MSGs in it. Hmm. Yeah. You did well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we need to do this group thing again. Hang on a second. Hold this. Okay, do the group thing. Okay. So you got to get, I gotta get, get some, some of the olive oil. Here. See, that's why when you're... Guys, okay. when you're putting all this in the jug, don't even hesitate to fill okay. it with olive oil because this. you've got to have it. This is part of it. The meat is outstanding. Thank you. Just a Boston butt. Yeah. The good thing about this. I you, like the whole hands thing. This yeah. Is Who's going to hold your plate when I'm not here? That's so good. <laughs> okay. I love it. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together, it right? It comes together very well. Well, good. Good. The good thing about the, uh, mm. the Greek pork. It's so tender. Put it together on Thursday, mm -hmm. put it in the fridge, and then on the weekend when you don't want to cook, all I did was pour it in a skillet and cook it. It's very, very, you know, and you've it's got so your, tender. Marinating three mm. days. If I marinated three days, I'd be tender too. <laughs> and olive oil. <laughs> Guys, I really want you to try these recipes. I really thank Deb for popping in. Oh, sure we great. needed a taste tester. Anytime. Darling. Anytime. Y'all heard that. Hey, I didn't get any of this. Oh my gosh, you've got to try the baklava. Can you can you put that plate down? You can trade. All right. While Deb's trying to fork for this? Nah, finger, finger it, girl. Heck, finger right? it. Y'all can uh we're gonna be getting all these recipes on the website so you can look them up because I did go hastily oh, that has through sugar these. In it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and honey. This that made beautiful. it healthy. The honey it made does, it healthy. The honey makes it healthy. Yeah, that's these it. are local bees, right? Yeah. Local. Actually, it really is. Good. That makes Philip it Garrison, buy my honey. There you go. That's this it. This is great. Well, I really thank you all for tuning mm. in. And guys, really, when you go into any of our sponsors, any of their facilities, tell them you've seen the show. Tell them and thank them for sponsoring the show because without them, this could not be possible. And, of course, I have mentioned Doug Doggett and the Sorelli Jewelry. I was going to mention this at the beginning of the show because uh, – this come from Doug Doggett. It's part of my Sorelli. I work with everything. What do you think, Deb? Looks good. There you go. So, guys, thank you all so much. Come back uh, when we do another show. But watch this show, and I hope everything goes well. If you have any questions, my number is on my commercials that's showing. Uh, you can uh, Facebook me. We're on Facebook, What's Cooking uh, with Teresa. And uh, enjoy. Enjoy cooking. Don't be afraid to try it. I'm not. Thank you all very much, and you all have a very blessed week.